Hi everybody, this is Laura and today I'd like to announce that Zenco now officially supports DigitalOcean Spaces as a backend. So a quick reminder for those of you who don't know, uh, Zenco is a free open source multi-cloud data controller. So it lets you write in native format to any cloud, any cloud currently being Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, Wasabi, uh, the Scaly Ring, local storage, which is literally a S3 bucket on your disk, and now digital ocean spaces. Um, what it brings to you is a single namespace over all those clouds, a single endpoint uh, to reach all of them, and a single API, uh, because we use the S3 API, the de facto standard uh, object storage API to write to all of these. Um, so what we're going to do today is replicate between Amazon S3, uh, an Amazon S3 bucket to a digital ocean space using Zenko. Um, and we're going to do this using my sandbox, which is something that you can create for yourself after this, uh, go to admin.zenko.io, uh, login, uh, you'll be asked to log in with a Google account currently. And then um, you'll have a, the option to take a tour of Zenko Orbit, which is our management UI, or to um, deploy Zenko, register your Zenko instance. And there, if you don't have a Zenko instance uh, for yourself, you can just ask us to deploy one for you so you can test the stack. Um, it lives for 48 hours, and if you like it, it's super easy to then uh, go to our GitHub, github.com slash scality slash Zenko, and just follow the instructions and deploy Zenko and register it uh, with Orbit. So with all of that said, um, this is the landing page for Orbit. Um, my um, instance is pretty much unused, so it's brand new. This is why you are not seeing anything here. Um, but it will give you stats uh, over time, uh, like CPU usage of the VM where it's deployed, etc. And the first thing we're going to do together is configure um, a storage location. So I already configured one called Zenko S3. Um, if I show you, it's it's of type Amazon S3, and it goes to a bucket called Zenko bucket. So if I go to the console here, oops, um, you can see that. I have Zenko bucket right here, and this is what we're going to be writing to. Um, I'll now create one to my digital ocean Zenko space. And oops, um, my uh, Zen oh, sorry, my digital ocean space and that space is called Zenko space. And it's hosted in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, you can see here if you don't know where your uh, space is, you can go to settings and check the endpoint. So I'll add a new storage location. I'll say the type, it is digital ocean. Um, I'll give it a name, so because the other one I called Zenko S3, dash S3, I'll call this one Zenko dash geo. Um, I'll give it my access key secret key pair for digital ocean. Oops. I'll give it the name of my space. So we said Zenko space. And I'll give it my endpoint. So this one would be if it was in NYC. And um, as I showed you, the endpoint is in the settings tab of your space. Um, so I'll just copy that and go back here. And I'll just show you that um, Orbit, Zenko Orbit, the management UI does a lot of proofing for you. So here I added stuff at the end of the endpoint. And if I try to save, it's telling me could not save, could not validate location. So using Orbit to manage your data um, and your locations, your backends is just making your life a lot easier because you don't get to mess up your uh, JSON file. Uh, we do it for you. <laughs> so, um, and, and therefore uh, we check. If you were to uh, manually edit everything, which you can do, everything is documented, um, you might be a lot more error prone. Um, You'll, you'll get errors, of course, in the logs, but I recommend using Orbit for that, just for the proofing and the checks. So I've created a new location, Zenko Geo. And what I'll do is I'll show you on the settings page um, how I configured my S3 client. So because I'm running Ubuntu, I'll be using S3 command, uh, but you could use Cyberduck. And actually, if you're on Windows or Mac and use Cyberduck, you can just download the Cyberduck profile right away. Uh, this is the endpoint where my uh, test stack, my sandbox is running. 
And this is the key I've created for myself. So as Zenko is 100% standard with S3, um, we give you the access key once, and then once you refresh the page, it's gone. So if you lose it, you have to request that you replace it. And if I show you a terminal, and I'll do a cat of my S3 config file, you can see that this is the same key and this is the same endpoint. Okay, um, we're gonna check that it works actually. So ls and it's empty. This this is a, a plain instance. Let me let me make this a bit bigger and the font as well. There you go. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create buckets in the different locations. And so let's remember um, that the region, that those locations amount to regions in S3 speech are called Zenko Dio and Zenko S3. And what I'll do is I'll create a bucket in Zenko S3, put something in it, and replicate it to Zenko Dio. Oops. So S3 is the ND MB. That's the name of the bucket. It's a bit long. And I'll specify that the region is Zenko S3. OK, let's do a list. OK, this bucket exists. So now what I'll do is I'll set up a replication workflow from this bucket to the uh, Zenko D region. OK, replications are set here. And I don't have anything set up yet. Create a new workflow, S3 to DO. Um, I only have one bucket, so it's only offering me this. And the location, this, the target location is Zenko Dio. I could add more locations, like um, if I wanted to, I didn't configure it right here, but if I wanted to also replicate to say Microsoft Azure, to have three copies in three different clouds to avoid vendor lock-in, I could, uh, this is letting me do it, and this you can edit over time. If you wanted to replicate only uh, objects with a certain prefix within that bucket, you could by uh, putting it here. And if you're interested in knowing how we do all of this, again, everything is open source. So check out the Backbeat project. It's on GitHub, github.com slash scalady slash backbeat. So I have this replication workflow. It's uh, set up. It didn't send me any errors, so everything is correct. And now let's try this. So let's put the universal uh, demo file in this bucket. Where did I make a typo? Replication, sorry. Okay, so see, for some reason, um, S3 was uh, down or just not answering. So this is exactly why you want to have copies in different clouds, because uh, if your app uh, needs really quick answers, if S3 goes throws an error, you don't have to wait three seconds. You just shoot it to DigitalOcean and you get it from there. Okay, so let's see what's in there. Let's refresh this page. And we have the bucket I mentioned, uh, which acts as a prefix inside the target bucket in AWS. If I go in it, you have the hosts file. OK, that's pretty cool. Um, what about the Zenko space? Same thing. I have this bucket, which is a replica. And I have the hosts file. And I'll get all the metadata that, you know, telling me that I use S3 CMD and all of that. So that's it, folks. It's that easy to uh, use Zenko and manage it via Zenko Orbit to set up replication workflow between, say, S3 and DigitalOcean. Of course, again, you could do it between S3 and any of the available locations. So just a reminder, that's uh, local storage, Wasabi, The Ring, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and uh, DigitalOcean. Um, I hope that this lets you manage your multi-cloud life uh, in a much easier way and that it makes AWS S3 cheaper for you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our forum, forum.zenko.io. 
and we look forward to having your feedback. Have a great day.